Welcome back. So hopefully by now you've got your screen set up with all the assets that you want in it. Uh, I probably should have pointed out in the last video in the content drawer. So you can make that show and hide by clicking on that link there. Uh, if we go to the all section here and go to the content folder, if you want to find some new assets, uh, you can go to Kenny Christmas folder and there's all the assets in here that come from that Kenny um, from that Kenny library I guess that I downloaded so if you want to put a Hanukkah thing in there or Kwanzaa you can just drag it from there on and resize it or rotate it or do whatever you want with it I'm just going to delete that out of my scene but just so you know you're not restricted to the assets that are here and if you know what you're doing you can import assets from other places as well but let's get started with the new stuff for this video so what I want to show you is if I hit play here so this is what the game's going to look like if I click inside here and I move my mouse the view rotates and we don't want it to be that weak because we don't want people looking all over here. It's nothing very nice to look at. I'll just press escape. We actually want it to be set on a particular view. So that's what we're going to set up first. And we also want to make it that the mouse appears and that you can actually click on things. So if I press play again, you'll notice when I click inside here, the mouse actually disappears and uh, it would be very hard to click on something to be able to do that. So that's what we're going to fix right now. Uh, and just a reminder again, if your point of view moves and you're not happy with where it is uh, and you want to see what it looks like from the player's perspective in the outliner, if you find player start and if you right click and go snap view to object, that's what your player is going to see. Alrighty, so let's get into it. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our content drawer. Make sure you're in the content folder. We're going to create a new folder in here. So right click and we're going to go new folder. We're going to call it blueprints. Now blueprints are the visual coding system inside Unreal. And you can do quite a lot of coding for your game inside blueprints. But there's also a programming language called C++, which you can also use to create code in Unreal. Blueprints can get you a long way, but C++ will get you further. In this project, we're only going to be using Blueprints and it's very visual. So it's great if you're sort of more into the outside of things, but even if you're not, you might actually, if you're, especially if you're a visual person, you might enjoy using Blueprints. And I must say, I'm more a coder, like I prefer to type my code, but even I can see that the nice thing about Blueprints is that you can actually get things going generally more rapidly. It doesn't mean you won't still run into problems, but usually you can get things going more quickly. All right, so if you want to, you can pause the video and create your Blueprints folder. The next thing I'll get you to do is we're going to just change the color of that uh, folder just to make our life a bit easier. So right click on it and go set color. And I'm gonna make mine a bluey sort of color. And now it's just a bit easier and a bit quicker to find if I'm looking for it. If we go in there, there's nothing in there at the moment. All right, so let's go into that folder. We're going to right click in there. You could also get here by going to add. Um, and we are going to make a new blueprint class. Like that. You could also just choose that one there. I tend to like using these menus so blueprints blueprint class now these are some of the classes that unreal already creates for us now you can make all this stuff from scratch but the reason you'd use an engine like unreal engine is the developers of unreal have thought about all the different types of things you might like to do in a game and they've tried to sort of pre-write code essentially to make that easier for you. So if we have a look, these are the main or most common um, parent classes that you're going to use. So actor is an object that can be placed or spawned in the world. A pawn is the same as an actor, but it can actually receive input from a controller. Whereas a character is a type of pawn. So you've got 
a character, which is a type of poem, which is a type of actor. Um, so you basically would choose the one that is the closest to what it is. So you'd read the description if you didn't know what you're doing, and you read the one that's the closest to what it is you want to make. In our case, we're wanting to change the, um, the, the what happens with the mouse. So in this case, that's actually the player controller. So a player controller is an actor responsible for controlling a pawn used by the player. So we're just going to click on that and I'm going to call this. Now, Unreal likes you to use a naming convention. You don't have to use it, but uh, typically Blueprints will have a capital P, a capital P underscore, and then the name of the class. So this one is player controller. And you'll notice they tend to use um, capital letters for new words. You never put spaces in uh, class names. You and these are called blueprint classes. You just put a capital letter at the beginning of each new word. So I'm going to press enter on that. So we've got BP underscore player controller. It knows that it's a player controller, so it's turned it into like a, a game controller icon. Now we're not actually going to do much. Well, we're not going to do any coding in here. We're actually just going to change some options. So we're going to double click on that player controller. And it should bring us up a box. There we go. It brings up some info over there. And we are going to look at this mouse interface section over here in the details panel. So one thing you noticed when we went into the game, and we clicked inside the game to get it started, we couldn't see a mouse. So first of all, we're going to click the show mouse cursor. Next thing is we're going to enable click events. I'm going to turn off enabling touch events, but if you're wanting to make this for a tablet or a touch screen, you could potentially leave that on. Um, and I'm also going to tick the enable mouse over events. And if you want to see what that says, you can actually drag that out or you can just hover your mouse over it and it also gives you a little bit more info hovering your mouse over it so it's not a bad thing to do anyway so we've ticked those three boxes show mouse cursor enable click events and enable mouse over events and i'm looking for another section okay so i want to um block input and what that will do will stop you know how the cursor was moving with my mouse um, it was moving around and rotating the view so that is going to stop that happening so just check that box uh, i might just get you to go back to the mouse interface section and just uh, click the triangle beside click event keys and just check that the left mouse button is there uh, because that's all we need to make it work and now if I close this, in fact I might save it first, so press save and close and press play. Oh, that's not working, so I'm going to need to fix that. Let's have a look at what I haven't done right here. What, what we haven't done yet, and I should have uh, tweaked this, I don't know why I didn't, is we haven't actually told, we've made a player controller, but we haven't actually told this game to use that player controller. Okay, so that's what we've got to do now. So even though we've made this, we haven't actually said, hey, Unreal, use this player controller. So I'm going to do that um, by creating a new blueprint. And this time we're going to make it based on the game mode base. So let's just right click again, blueprint class. And here is the game mode base. Let's read the description. Game mode base defines the game being played, its rules, scoring and other facets of the game type. So it's very broad. It's the overarching patterns of how the game's going to work, essentially. So click on that one. And once again, we call it BP underscore. Whoops. I must have hit enter by accident. I'm just going to rename that. BP underscore game mode base. All right. So I've done that. Now, if I double click on that one. And over here on the right, you'll see a list of classes. And one is, the, so this is a whole pile of different classes that control the rules of your game. We made a player controller class, but it's just set on the default player controller. So just click the down arrow here and see, here's the one we made, BP player controller. And 
and we'll save that and press close. So we've got it here. And one more thing I want to check. Down here beside the details panel, there is a world settings panel. And if you don't see that window, you just need to go to window and choose world settings. But if you don't see yours anyway, you can click on that and it will appear over here. So world settings, change the game mode override. And we're going to tell it we're going to use BP game mode base. So basically we're just saying you, and there's more than one way of doing this, but we're just telling our game we're using BP game mode base as the game mode. And if I click this little triangle there, you'll see, and it's using our BP player controller as the player controller class. So that should be all we need to do. So I'm just going to go file, save all. Now I'm going to press play. There we go. I've clicked in there. I have a mouse cursor once I clicked in there and my view is not rotating. So whilst that might not seem like a very exciting part of the game to make, it's actually very necessary to get the game working. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to start creating those hidden objects. So the ones that you can click on to set up your scene. So thanks for that. Just a quick one today and I look forward to catching up with you in the next video. See you soon.